Hi, I'm Dr. Ron Charles of the Cubit Foundation. You know, we've been in Middle East for going on 30 years. And I would love to come to your church or your meeting to let you know what's happening uh, in reality in the Middle East. And uh, we'd love to come there and let you know what's happening, what the Lord's doing in that part of the world. So if you can contact us at the Cubit Foundation dot org that we could come to your place and if you would like to find out more about us then go to www.cubitfoundation.org thank you i uh, thank you for coming out to worship the lord today and it's our great honor to be here uh, pastor thank you and church thank you for welcoming us. We feel that this is the beginning of many great things to come. And not only for for Egypt, but for the entire Middle East. Why not? Okay. So thank you. I want to introduce my wife, Paula, why don't you stand? She's been my companion now for 48 years. <laughs> and it's been a um, it's been a, a, a great journey. <laughs> you know, we have been concentrating on worship this morning. <laughs> and you know, there's there's many things that the church has been involved with of the last two thousand years. But one of the closest things to our Lord's heart is worship. And you recognize that. You became, you became involved with that this morning. And with the list of worship music you have on your overhead, this is not new to you. Uh, your leadership has taught you well that worship is necessary. Now we know that the, uh, the most important issue is the fact that Jesus saved you for eternal death. But second to that, uh, worship plays a, the next most important part. Because you're giving honor to the one who saved you. You're giving honor to the Father who sacrificed his son so that we have a, a, a worship. Jesus had his own opinion concerning worship. And he voiced that opinion to one woman. A woman who came to a well by herself to, to draw water for her family. And she was all alone. Jesus could have revealed this great secret to multitudes. He could have revealed it to the thousands who gathered to hear his teachings. But he did not. He revealed it to one woman. A woman who was not a bishop. She was not a president. She was not an ambassador. She was a woman that did not have a good past. 
But Jesus talked to her anyway and revealed to her one of the greatest truths that has ever been quoted by anyone. We're going to look at that in the book of John. Chapter number four. And uh, we will read verse number 21 through 24. من قال لها يسوع يا امراه صدقين انه تاتي ساعه لا في هذا الجبل ولا في اورشليم تسجدون للاله انتم تسجدون لما لستم تعلمون اما نحن فنسجد لما نعلم لان الخلاص هو من اليهود ولكن تاتي ساعه وهي الان حين السيدون الحقيقيون يسجدون للاله بالروح والحق لان الان طالب مثل هؤلاء السجدين له الله روح والذين يسجدون له فبالروح والحق at that time, there was much confusion concerning worship. And the confusion was caused by the religious leadership. This lady lived in Samaria. And they had their place of worship their own temple of worship. Now, the leaders of this temple says that God only listens to your worship two times a week. On a Friday and a Saturday is when God listens to worship. And you must come to the, the, the temple of worship through the south door of the south gate. And you must wear a special clothing, a special uh, cloak, shawl. And at exactly one hour past sunrise, then God begins to listen. And it is at that time that you can begin to worship God. He, he will listen to you for four hours and then no longer until the next day and then you have another four hours. Now, there was the other temple in Jerusalem. They had different rules. And they dictated when God would listen. They said God listens on Saturday and Sunday. And he listens for six hours. Now the men, they must wear a, uh, a shawl that covers their head in addition. And the women, they must wear one that covers their head and their face. And you have two hours after sun, uh, sunrise that you can go into the temple. But you must enter the temple from the eastern gate. And if you do not enter the eastern gate, then God will not listen to your praise. And uh, in addition, 
God will not listen to your worship unless the worship is led by a priest. So we have two different uh, rules and regulations concerning worship to the same God. Which one was right? The ones in Jerusalem had been fighting the people in, Jer in Samaria over this question. And there were two times that the fighting was done with swords and knives. And people lost their lives arguing on what is best type of worship. And this woman knew that this Jesus was a holy man. She says, I will get the answer once and for all. And I will find out which rules that God wants best. How is God worshipped? And how does he accept worship? And then Jesus told her something very profound. He says, neither one is correct. Not in Samaria, not in Jerusalem. God is not worshipped with rules and with regulations. God doesn't care what type of covering you wear. He doesn't care if you cover your your face or cover your head or no covering at all. He doesn't care whether it's Monday, Tuesday or Saturday or Sunday. God is a spirit. And he needs worship in truth. Now this is something that these people have never heard before. Because now, what is truth? What does it mean to worship in truth? So Jesus has already said that it doesn't matter where. It doesn't matter how. It doesn't matter what you're dressed in. It doesn't matter the day. It doesn't matter your cultural status. It doesn't matter how much money you have or how little you have. Jesus says worship must be in truth. So what is truth? Truth is what is true to you based on your personality. So now Jesus has now made worship an individual thing and not an establishment thing. It is, it is not dictated by a church. It is, it is not dictated by a government. It is not dictated by a holy book. It is not dictated by any type of leadership. It is dictated by your and your and your heart. And what is true to you is true worship. 
We had we had wonderful music this morning. You all responded differently. Now some of you have a very excitable personality. You 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 like to 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 have things moving. And and you can and you can jump up and you can raise your hands and you can jump because you feel that inside. And people are not surprised with that because that is your personality. People know you. They, they know how you act. They know how you respond. And how you respond based on your personality is truth. Now, others of you are very quiet. You don't speak publicly, out loud. You are not comfortable with raising your hands. You aren't comfortable showing that emotional side. You still honor your God. You still love your God. And you are still very much uh, dedicated to your God. But your personality says that you are solemn. That I, I don't feel that I need to jump. I feel that I need to be alone with myself and with my God in my mind. And if you're like that, then it's okay. It's okay not to jump. It's okay not to clap. It's, it's okay because that is real to you. And Jesus knew this. So one of the greatest sermons Jesus ever preached was to one woman. And one of the greatest truths that he ever shared was to one woman. And Jesus made worship for the individual. Now, those who are with one personality, they have no right to judge another of another personality. When others are jumping with their hands raised, and others are silent, that's okay. It doesn't mean they're less dedicated. It doesn't mean that they're less uh, in love with their God. What it means is that they're being true and they're worshiping in truth. But to try to change your personality to satisfy the expectations of those around you, that is not truth. And, and that's the type of worship that God is not pleased with. Be true to you. Be true to your personality that God has given you. 
And when you worship him in spirit and in truth, then that's the worship that God accepts and the one that he's pleased with. We are greatly honored to be here. And as we have looked out over this audience, we can easily identify 50, 60, 70 different personalities. Be true to that personality. Because that's the one God has given you. And, and openly worshiping Him within that gift that He's given you, that is what He expects. And that's what He expects from you. Now, there may be those here that you have no idea what I'm talking about. Because you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior. You know, my wife and I have been in Egypt for 31 years. We haven't lived here uh, full time. We've traveled back and forth. And uh, it's been one of the, some of the greatest times of our life. But a day like this, where we can openly worship the Lord in freedom, I didn't know if I would ever see that in my lifetime. You believers in Egypt have overcome mountains in order to be here. You've endured unimaginable persecution of the body and the soul and the spirit to be able to gather here. And we honor you. And we admire you. And we feel not only humbled, but greatly, greatly, greatly honored just to be in your presence. Because when our Lord passes out his, his uh, reward is to you. And to all believers, you will be the ones that are going to be first in line. So we honor you. And, but but if, you, if you haven't had that opportunity to make Jesus your Savior, let, let's take that opportunity today. And I certainly don't want to uh, counter any cultural experience, but I do want to pray. And then as I pray, then you, if you have never accepted Jesus, take this opportunity while I pray to ask him to forgive you of your sin. And to give your life to him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the gift of salvation. 
through Jesus Christ. We thank you for the suffering that he endured. We thank you for the horrible experience that he went through for our benefit so that we can give praise so that we can give worship and give honor. But today, for those that have never accepted Jesus, we want to give them that opportunity. Now, Lord, there may be those there that are praying for the first time. As they ask you to forgive them of their sin, then honor that and forgive them as they ask you to come into their life then honor that request and come into their life today give them your peace and be with them from this time forward and forever and we thank you for the assurance of eternal life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hi, I'm Dr. Ron Charles of the Cubit Foundation. You know, we've been in Middle East for going on 30 years. And I would love to come to your church or your meeting to let you know what's happening uh, in reality in the Middle East. And uh, we'd love to come there and let you know what's happening, what the Lord's doing in that part of the world. So if you can contact us at thecubitfoundation.org, then we could come to your place. And if you would like to find out more about us, then go to www.cubitfoundation.org. Thank you.